Hey guys, uh, this is Aaron and I'm from group 3 and this video is on um, continuing the image segmentation topic but this video is going to be um, talking specifically about the region growing technique and the way I designed the video is just I mean, give you a whole bunch of information, kind of like a lecture in the beginning and then at the end show you some visual uh, aids, visual representations of how the technique is being applied. Okay, so the object of segmentation is to partition the image into different regions. Uh, we saw this in class when Dr. Leonard showed us the image uh, that was segmented into three regions and the regions were the tiger, the water, and the grass. And I think it was orange for the tiger, green for the grass, and blue for the water. So, so it's basically taking an image and partition it into X amount of regions depending on the image. In this video I will discuss a segmentation technique that is based on finding the regions directly. Uh, the technique I'll be discussing is region growing. Uh, this procedure will group pixels or small regions into larger regions based on the criteria for growth. So this process was um, touched on a little bit last week in class but um, to start with, you start with a set of seed points, and from these seed points, you grow regions by appending to each seed the neighboring pixels that are around it that have similar properties to the seed, such as specific ranges or colors or any other type of um, criteria that you designate that is um, that you designate to be similar to the seed. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and show you examples of of what I mean by the neighboring pixels around it later in the video. Selecting a set of one or more points to start from will be based on the image and any limitations that you notice within the image. And these type of limitations could be uh, noise or um, bad exposure when the picture was taken, anything that's um, obviously visible to your eye just right off the bat when you look at the original image. <clears throat> uh, the procedure is to compute at every pixel the same properties that will be used to assign pixels to specific regions in the growing process. If the computations show clusters of values then the pixels whose properties near the center of these clusters can be used as seeds. As stated earlier the um, selection process not only depends on the image limitations but also on the image data. For example, the selection process will depend on the color scheme of an image. If an image is um, made up of uh, is is a color image, then it the process selection process won't be too hard. But if the image was a grayscale image, the selection process will become more difficult. When an image is composed of the same type of color, then the region analysis can can use descriptors based on the spatial properties and intensity levels. So this is an example of uh, what I just talked about when the image has the same color scheme. Uh, this isn't a grayscale image, but you could see in this uh, picture of the eyeball that all these veins, pretty much all the color in the whole entire image is, is kind of this pinkish color, except for this white right here. But because the color scheme in the entire image is the same, it's going to be, there's going to be, it's going to be um, very hard to do the selection process and this is what I was talking about using you'd have to use the scriptures that are based solely on the intensity level or spatial properties that you designate. I'm now gonna go over the uh, four-step process that's uh, in the book. Uh, to start with we're gonna let f of x comma y denote the input image so your original starting image and we're gonna let s comma S of X comma Y denote the seed array. Um, the seed array is going to have ones that contain the specific locations of wherever the seeds are and zeros everywhere else. And we're going to let Q uh, denote the predicate that is applied to each location. The, the Q, the predicate is going is the is the um, process that determines whether um, pixels will be appended to the seeds and and it's what grows the region. Um, one thing to start with, uh, you want to make your, it's assumed that the original image F 
and that the seed array s of x comma y are the same size. And so this four steps is a is a basic region growing algorithm. So going through it, you want to find all the components, all the connected components of the seed array, and erode each component to one pixel. And as stated above, uh, wherever it's labeled one, that's where the seeds are, and everywhere else is going to be labeled zero. The next step is you want to determine which points are should be labeled as one and which points should be labeled as zero. So you go through the entire image, and your predicate is what determines whether it's going to be whether each pixel is going to be a one or a zero. So if it satisfies the predicate, it's going to be changed to one. If it doesn't, it's going to stay at zero. The uh, next step is creating a new image G, and it's formed by appending each seed point in the uh, seed array to all the one valued points and in this particular example they use an 8 connect um, mask I think um, that determines the neighboring pixels around the seed points so step 3 is basically um, clustering all these when you go through the image and you have ones and zeros you're clustering all the ones together and that's basically the, the growing part of the algorithm. So, and label four, or uh, step four, um, labels these regions one, two, three, all the way up to n. <clears throat> Not every uh, every image is going to be different. You don't know how many regions you're going to have uh, based on your predicate and your um, seeds that you choose. So once you once you um, grow your regions and cluster them together you have to determine how many regions you have so it could be one two three all the way up to n regions if that was complicated here's a more basic idea of the region growing process suppose you have a single pixel p and you want to know whether it should be expanded to that uh, c pixel so you're going to define a similarity measure here that's s of i comma j if the if it produces if Using the similarity measure, if i and j are similar, it's going to get a 1. If they're not similar, it's going to get a 0. So you pick up an adjacent point to p, and here they're using q. So you want to determine whether you need to append p to, uh, q to p to grow the region. Uh, you grow it if and only if the similarity measure is greater than the threshold. So here they're using a predicate of threshold. And the similarity measure can be uh, measuring the intensity values. Maybe you could use a measure the average intensity. It's whatever you choose. So if when you look at two points, P and Q, if their similarity measure is greater than the threshold, then it's going to be then they're going to be joined. Those two points are going to be appended, and the region will have grown from one pixel to two pixels. And if they're not, if it if it doesn't satisfy, if it's less than the threshold, then they're not going to be joined. So the region will not grow. So whether they are joined or not, you want to go through each neighboring pixel to determine whether each neighboring pixel will be joined to the seed and whether it'll expand and grow in a region or whether it'll not. Well, lastly, it's not always your best option to start with one seed you might want to start with multiple seeds the advantage here is that it creates not only a regional mean but also a regional variance and this helps produce uh, identical regions within your image um, given if the image has noise or any other limitations so a good example would be using the rice image you if you just start with one seed somewhere in this image, it might not be the best option for you to get all the regions you want. Obviously, one region will be the background. Um, it's pretty much one region. And then all the other regions are the individual rice grains. So if you start off with multiple seeds just scattered throughout this image, it'll create um, a, a variance within these rice grains that'll that'll um when it's going through it'll help you better pick up these rice grains individually and then you could um at the end you could
determine how many regions you have. Here's a basic visualization of how region growing works. You start off with your initial your initial pixel and you just your initial seed and you evaluate all the neighboring pixels. So the 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 arrows represent the direction of growth. So you start off with this original pixel, the original seed, and it grows to this bigger square. And from this bigger square, you keep evaluating all these neighboring pixels and it's going to grow into this this boundary is basically the boundary of this region. So it'll grow and it'll encapsulate this entire boundary. Here are some bad things that could happen when when doing a region growing technique. Um, when you are doing the process, um, one one region can dominate other regions and it could result in regions combining or regions not growing the right way and that's that's bad. Another effect is if you choose different seed patterns it could give you different segmentation results so you might not get everything you want in one process and you might get too much of something in another process. Uh, one of the last problems is if you choose your seed and your seed just happens to be on the boundary that's also bad. You either want your seed to be within a boundary like within the the grain of rice or outside of the grain of rice region so either it'll either grow and grow into the region of the rice or it'll grow as a part of the background so down here there's some ways to prevent these problems from above um the similarity neighborhoods regions are taken into account when you're doing the region growing process so you, if you have an image that has similar colors or similar scheme then you take that into account also you don't let one region dominate the others you let multiple regions grow at the same time so this bullet right here kind of talks about multiple seeds you let, you use multiple seeds at um at the same time instead of just using one seed so basically if you control these and avoid these problems you you'll get better segmentation results so here's an example of region growing where you're only using one seed and as I said before this could be bad if your image is uh, pretty complex. So you have a, a chest ray, a chest x-ray image and you see some arteries and a bunch of vital organs. So you start with a single image, single seed and you start growing it and you get all these arteries up here but as you continue to grow the region as you see that it continues to grow down and you start getting the lungs and all these other arteries you can see where you originally started it becomes distorted and you're losing information your this is an example of when the seed region dominates the others the other regions and you can see it just becomes totally distorted and you're losing it's just one big blank white space now and you you lost a bunch of information you're collecting you're collecting um regions in the foreground and background and it's just meshing it all together and that's not good. I talked about pixel connectivity before and I want to show you now the the two basic neighborhood neighborhoods that are used for um, determining pixel connectivity. So here's the four connectivity. So you start with this original pixel and you basically take the top bottom left and right neighbors to it and as opposed in the 8 connectivity you're taking those same four but you're also taking the four diagonals so you're taking kinda of like the entire neighborhood around this pixel whereas in the 4 connectivity you're just taking the the immediate neighbors in the four directions of top bottom left and right 